a farmer in Michigan was digging in a field when he unearthed something he never expected. In 2015, on a chilly Friday morning, James Bristle made the decision to dig up one of his soy fields. He asked two of his office friends for help after planning it for some time. Thus, James' pal showed up at his home about 7.30 in the morning, and the group then headed out to the field. The men got down to work and they started digging. But after they had been tilling the earth for approximately 20 minutes, James's shovel struck something firm, and he immediately alerted his buddies to it. Hey guys, there is something here. Come and take a look at this. James screamed and his friends walked over to him. The group started to dig the place around the place where James had discovered the peculiar object. Due to the mud covering it, they couldn't see the object properly yet, but they did know that whatever it was, it was quite large. As the man began clearing the object of the mud they thought it to be a bent French post. They cleaned the object of the mud and found that it was a ribbon, a very large one. The astonishment quickly subsided, and the guy grew interested in learning more about the bone. James' friends even suggested that the bone may be from a dinosaur. He then rushed around the field while carrying the bone in his arms, yelling, here comes the dinosaur, we found the dinosaur. It wasn't a dinosaur, so what else could it have been? Soon enough, James heard the man's screams and they rushed down to the field to take a look at the great find the nature of the bone they knew it was phenomenal. The man also believed the rib they had pulled up to be the only one buried. They had no idea that there were still other bones there. Not just one, two, or three. James and his buddies went out to a paleontologist at the University of Michigan to show their find since they realized they couldn't determine the actual nature of the bone on their own. Soon enough they would realize the enormity of the discovery. Without delay, James Field was visited by the paleontology department staff. James eventually sat down after what seemed like an eternity when the bone arrived on the ground, and Dan Fisher then spoke out. They told James and his friends that they would tell them the nature of the bone, but he had a strong feeling that there would still more bones underground. Thus, he requested James' permission to conduct an excavation so they could reach the bones. In this manner, he could confirm whether the bone was indeed what he and his colleagues believed it to be. He told Dan the fact that they didn't know what they would find down there made the whole experience interesting and exciting. While the guys worked, they all had different theories about the bones, if any were found there. Firstly, how these bones even got to James' farm in the first place. One of the diggers started screaming while they were talking, and everyone ran to where he was standing. Then he pointed at something on the ground. It was a giant tusk. Everyone now believed that there would be other remains in the earth. Dan Fisher was correct, they became extremely driven when they discovered the giant's tusk. They got to work right away and started working quickly. Since he was now firmly convinced that they were on the verge of making a groundbreaking discovery, Dan eventually disclosed to James that the bones may be those of a mammoth. James had discovered a woolly mammoth, and he planned to send it to the University of Michigan for more research. Dan also made the assumption that the mammoth most likely existed between 10,000 and 15,000 years ago. He further mentioned that hunters could have took the life of the mammoth. Besides, a mark on the rib showed that the mammoth may have been butchered. Why didn't they simply eat it immediately or sell it off? James and his friends asked. Just then, Dan explained that the hunters probably placed the mammoth in a pond as a sort of primitive meat preservation technique. In the meantime, the guy kept searching the ground for more remains. The team spent a lot of time digging in the field before discovering something bizarre. Along with the pelvic bone of the mammoth, they also discovered its cranium, which had two enormous tusks, ribs, vertebrae, and both shoulder blades. How incredible! Dan described the astonishing discovery as one of the top 10 most significant finds in Michigan history. The woolly mammoth skeleton was still incomplete, but it just lacked a few minor bones in its rear limbs and feet. All the neighborhood soon heard about the gigantic discovery, and many people came to James Field to view it for themselves. <laughs>